Welcome to today's webinar hosted by eLotus. We are proud to be your source for quality CEU content, having provided educational courses for over two decades. Our goal is to help you elevate your knowledge and expand your skill set. With over 250 speakers, 900 courses, and a staggering 3,500 hours of continued education, we are committed to providing you with the best educational experience possible. I'm Donna Chow, your host and moderator for this session, and I'm thrilled to be guiding you through this session. Today's class is sponsored by Evergreen Herbs. The class is the anti-inflammatory effect of Chinese herbs presented by the esteemed Dr. John Chen, who is a recognized authority in both Western pharmacology and Chinese herbal medicine. He's the leading author for the Chinese medical herbology and pharmacology, Chinese herbal formulas and applications, and Chinese herbal formulas and veterinarians books. He is also the herbal consultant for Evergreen Herbs, where you can reach him by email to ask him questions on potential herb drug interactions for your patients. His contact information is in your lecture notes and more information about the herbs as well. Dr. Chen will share today what you can find in his books and can be also purchased at evherbs.com. To find past webinars presented by Dr. Chen and also earn CEUs, you can find that on elotus.org. The class will run from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time with one break. Before we get started, let me highlight some important Zoom features. First, we have the chat room. It's an excellent tool to connect with your fellow colleagues, and I encourage you to set your chat preference to everyone to make it inclusive. Second, the Q&A box is where you can ask questions for the speaker. Please limit your questions to relevant topics to keep the session organized and efficient. Lastly, for those who qualify, the CU quiz will be available the following workday, and I'll send you an email when it's ready. Okay, let's go ahead and get started, and welcome Dr. Chen. All right, uh, let's do a quick audio and video check first. So those of you who are listening to this class, please type in the chat whether you can hear me and see me okay before we start today's class. Okay, so hang on just one second. Hi, this one. Okay, so... Um, is the audio and video both good? All right, great. All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to be with you again today. Our topic today is gonna be the anti-inflammatory effect of Chinese herbs. And before I start today's class, um, okay. Um, today's class is actually um, the third of a three-part class on COVID-19 and TCM. Uh, obviously, we did the COVID-19 uh, past, present, and future already, and I think that was done late last year or early this year. Um, and COVID-19 at this point is no longer a global pandemic. In fact, I believe WHO has officially ended the pandemic status. But nonetheless, uh, it was a great lesson for, uh, for all of us to learn from. So next time uh, when this happens again, we will be much better prepared. And some of the lesson that we should learn from this is the global pandemic, this is certainly not the first time and certainly won't be the last. Um, so the next time another infection like this happen again, one of the first thing we need to learn is that there are a lot of Chinese herbs who in fact have excellent antibiotic effect. So both antibacterial and also antiviral. Uh, so we definitely need to know which one those are so we can get the best effect to treat the infection itself. Okay, and then the other is the complication of the infection, and that would be the inflammation. Because as the bacteria and virus attack different parts of the body, they're gonna trigger an inflammatory response. Okay, so in most cases, that's healthy, but in some cases, the inflammatory process gets out of hand, or the immune system becomes hyper-responsive and cause a kind of storm, or trigger uh, subsequent autoimmune disease later on. So we also need to learn 
what are some of the herbs we can use to treat the inflammatory response by the body. Okay, so that will be the topic today. What are some of the herbs that have such anti-inflammatory effect? All right. Um, in today's class, we will mostly talk about herbs that have anti-inflammatory effect to treat inflammation of the organs. Okay, so whether that's the lung, the skin, the nose, and so on. Uh, when the term anti-inflammatory is used, a lot of time it also refers to pain management, uh, such as patients with inflammation of the joint, arthritis, or muscles, and so on. So from that perspective, you have drugs such as ibuprofen, naproxen, Voltaren, and so on. So that's a separate topic, that's a separate class. Uh, if you are interested in the pain management and the uh, anti-inflammatory effect of Chinese herbs to treat pain, um, I have done, done some classes up on that in the past. So if you're interested, here are two of the topics and some, the links for those classes. But like I mentioned today, we will mostly talk about anti-inflammatory effect as it pertains in inflammation of the internal organs. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so a lot of people think of pain and inflammation as if they are bad things. And the first thing I wanna say is that's not necessarily the case. And the reason is because pain and inflammation is a normal body response. And in fact, they are supposed to act as a warning sign to tell us that something is wrong with the body. So when you first have a headache or first have a stomach pain or maybe you sprain your ankle and then it shows pain and inflammation, it's supposed to tell you that something is wrong to take care of it. That way, a small problem doesn't turn into a medium problem and a medium problem doesn't turn into a big problem. All right, so pain and inflammation are both supposed to be positive warning signs. But every once in a while, the inflammation can get out of hand. Okay, so as we mentioned in all the previous COVID classes, uh, the inflammation can get out of hand in terms of leading to cytokine storm, or the immune system can become so hyperly responsive that subsequently it triggers autoimmune disease. All right, so there is healthy inflammation and there's also unhealthy and abnormal inflammation. But inflammation, why does it occur? Why is it necessary? So imagine if you would, um, you suffer from something. Okay, that something could be trauma, could be injury, or it could be some type of external stimulus. All right, so it could be the bacteria, the virus, the endotoxin, the stress, tumor, ultraviolet ray, you know, uh, whatever it may be. So now you have some type of cause that triggers the need for the body, body to repair it. All right, so this, call, this cause may be somewhere in your head, in your lung, in your ankle, in your liver, you know, some part of your body. So the cells in your body needs to get to the disease area in order to fix a problem. And the way it does that is these trauma, injury, and stimulus will first cause the body to reduce substance called the histamine, leukotriene, and prostaglandins. And what these compounds will do is they will act on the blood vessel to cause vasodilation. So now the blood vessel will dilate, will open up uh, pores for the cells to come out and take care of the problem. Okay, but along with the dilation of the blood vessel that allows the cell to come out, what you also have is the fluids will also rush out as well. So when the fluids rush out from the blood vessel to the surrounding tissues, obviously this is when we see the swelling and the inflammation. This will cause localized redness, warm sensation, swelling, and as the fluid expands, they press on the nerve ending and therefore also cause pain. All right, so this is part of the defense response to allow the cells to come out, but then during the process, a fluid also comes out. So once again, this quote-unquote inflammation is a good thing because it allows the cells such as macrophage, leukocyte, lin lymphocyte, neutrophils, and so on to come out and take care of the problem, right? So these are the white blood cells that need to go and attack the bacteria and virus to get rid of them. All right, so this part of the inflammation is obviously normal and is necessary. And then along the line, 
if the macrophage leukocytes and lymphocytes are able to take care of the problem, that may be the end. But sometimes the stimulus may be very specific. So the body needs something in addition to better take care of the problem. So now what happened is the macrocyte, macrophage, lymphocyte, and leukocyte will secrete additional substance to call for additional help. Those additional substance are TNF, which is tumor necrosis factor, IL, which is interleukin, and INF, which is interferon. So these are more specific re response that call for help to treat and target specific area. All right, so if all goes well, then the stimulus, the bacteria, the virus is eliminated, is out of the system, and the body has a memory cell that remember what these stimulus look like, and if they were to re-enter the body at some point in the future, they, they can then quickly recall the response needed in order to treat the same thing. So this is basically when our body develops an immunity to whatever the pathogen is. So this is a memory cell and its function. However, um, sometimes the problem is not properly resolved. Okay, so what I mean by that is the toxins, you know, whether it's from bacteria, virus, endotoxin, maybe from herbicide or pesticide, maybe some type of vaccination, some type of heavy metal, and so on and so forth. Maybe they are not completely eliminated. They are buried deep inside the fatty tissue, inside the organs, in different parts of the body that are not completely eliminated. So now what happens is the body will then continue to produce tumor necrosis factor into leukemia can interferon or other pro-inflammatory cytokines to continue to address and try to eliminate these pathogens. And what that means is the body is now in a chronic state where the immune system is always hyperactive. Okay, so this then slowly becomes chronic inflammation, slowly becomes autoimmune disease. So now the immune system is not only attacking the foreign tox toxins, but a lot of time is also attacking the healthy tissues that may be uh, harboring these foreign toxins. So now imagine, if you will, the immune system attacking maybe the lung, maybe the eyes, maybe the tear duct, maybe the kidney, maybe the skin, and so on. So it will then slowly lead to chronic inflammation, destruction of these tissues, destruction of these organs, and with destruction, the body may try to heal, and then the healing process may lead to fibrosis, or maybe the body is not really able to heal it, so you will then, the destruction will then slowly lead to degradation, to atrophy, and with the damage to the organ, you will also have a loss of function. So overall, basically, the chronic inflammation is the heat and fire. And the heat and fire in TCM long term will cause indeficiency and qi deficiency. The indeficiency in this case would correspond with the destruction of the tissues and organs and um, cells. Right, because in represents substance, and then qi represents function. So once you have damage of the organ, it's not able to protect, perform its normal function. So that's a loss of function in a qi deficiency or qi damage. So this is basically uh, the worst case scenario where the initial problem was not properly taken care of. So the acute inflammation then leads to the chronic inflammation. And the chronic inflammation is then form or perhaps an autoimmune disease where the organ suffers damage and then cannot perform its normal function. All right, so this part of the chronic inflammation is ob obviously abnormal, and it's what we try to target and end with either drugs in Western medicine or herbs in Chinese medicine. All right, and like I mentioned, you know, this hyperactive immune system and autoimmune disease can attack many, many different parts of the body. So depending on what organ and what part of the body that's attacked, then in Western medicine, you have different disease name, right? So if it's a skin, it could be dermatitis. It could be, if it's the eyes, it could be conjunctivitis. If it's a nose, it could be rhinitis, sinusitis. If it's a liver, hepatitis, kidney, nephritis, and so on and so forth. Okay, so basically, um, many different parts, many different organs in the body can all be affected by both acute and chronic inflammation. Okay, and from a Western medicine perspective, these are some of the drug categories that are most likely to be used and prescribed.
Okay, so they all treat inflammation, uh, even though they may or may not be technically accurate as an anti-inflammatory drug. So the first category will be anti-allergic. And these are drugs primarily used to treat allergy. So this is the earliest and probably the mildest form of reaction um, in the form of allergy or in the form of inflammation. So mostly these drugs are good for skin allergy and also nose allergy. All right, so skin allergy could be rash, eczema, dermatitis. And nose allergy could be in the form of sinusitis or, or, or rhinitis. And drugs include the original or the older drug called diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl. And then the newer ones, which are the non-sedating, basically means they will not make you sleepy and tired. And these are Claritin, Allegra, Zyrtec, and so on. Okay, and then you also have the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And like I mentioned earlier, these are primarily used to treat inflammation of the joints. So they are most effective to treat uh, arthritis, joint pain, and so on. Okay, so these are aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then if the inflammation is really severe, such as in the form of autoimmune disease, then immune suppressants are prescribed, so they have a very potent and drastic effect to suppress the immune system to treat autoimmune disease. Um, but the main problem with these drugs is once you suppress the immune system, that can then lead to a host of many other problems, including possibly cancer, uh, possibly um, very frequent infection, frequent and severe infection, because your immune system is no longer able to do its job due to being suppressed by these drugs. So these drugs include Remake, Humira, Embryo, Rheumatrex, and Cytoxin. And in fact, if you look at the last drug, Cytoxin or Cyclophosphamide, this is in fact mostly used as an immune suppressant in somebody who has received an organ transplant. Right, so when you receive a new organ, your body's natural response is to reject it as a foreign substance. So in order for the organ to stay, this drug is used to suppress the immune reaction so um, the organ will not be rejected. Okay, so if you can imagine if these drugs have such strong effect, then what happens is the immune system is really not able to do its job if you have other foreign substance, whether it's bacteria, virus, or maybe a mutated cell. And then finally, uh, one of the most po potent and also the most broad spectrum anti-inflammatory drug is of course the corticosteroids. And this include prednisone, deltazone, and so on. And the reason I say that is because the first three categories of these drugs have very specific pathways of maybe one pathway or one enzyme or one um, path that they work on. But steroids tend to have a very broad effect. So that's why I mentioned they are very broad spectrum and also very potent, okay? Um, so ideally, steroids are used when necessary, and if they are used correctly, they can be great life-saving advice or drugs. But if they are used incorrectly, uh, they can then lead to a lot of side effects, uh, mainly dependence on the drugs. All right, so graphically, uh, if the patient has a allergy type of problems, where the mast cells release too much histamine to trigger allergic reaction. Then this is where the anti-allergic medications are used basically to block the release of histamines right here. Okay, or in cases of injury where prostaglandins are released uh, to cause vasodilation, then the NSAIDs are the best choices, NSAIDs and also the COX-2 inhibitors. So these are the ones that primarily work on the joints, so they are more specific on the, on the disease area and less likely to cause side effects. So once again, these are aspirin, um, Motrin, Avil, Naproxen, Voterin, Celebrex, and so on. Okay, and then the immune suppressants are more specific. Uh, generally, they act on the tumor necrosis factor. So these drugs include Remake, Humira, Embryo, Rheumatrex, and Cytoxin. And then finally, steroids work on all the different pathways. Okay, so when in doubt or when necessary, steroids is like a shotgun therapy uh, to treat inflammation everywhere and due to the many different pathways. Okay, so this is a quick look into some of the drugs that are commonly prescribed, what they are and what they do.
Okay, so let's now switch gear and switch from Western medicine to Chinese medicine. So what happened is in Chinese medicine, we generally use uh, more artistic or philosophical terms, you know, such as herbs that clear heat, herbs that drain fire, herbs that, you know, do different things that we can all commonly feel. Uh, however, what happened is as you drill down and analyze or examine the herbs in their pharmacological effect, you will notice that there are in fact many herbs that have anti-inflammatory effect and they work on many different pathways as well. So these are some examples of herbs that have anti-inflammatory effect and I did this on purpose uh, meaning I tend you know I like to sometimes uh, overload the slide with too many herbs and the point here is not for you to write it all down or memorize what they are but the point here is so you remember that there are in fact many many Chinese herbs that all have anti-inflammatory effect okay so when you need to choose one there are many to choose from okay so basically it depends on where the disease area is and what specific pathway that you plan to target all right because different herbs are used for different things such as skin uh, inflammation or allergy nose inflammation or allergy or lung or kidney or liver and so on and also different severity uh, there's acute inflammation which tends to be a lot more heat and fire oriented and there's also chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is also heat but it tends to be more deficiency heat all right so um, the idea is you want to bring both together right you want to know what the herb is from a tcm perspective what they do what they treat ideally if you if you also know what the pharmacological effect is then that helps you to zero in and select a more spe specific herb based on the disease and also based on the pharmacology of the herb and similarly similarly with herbs formulas there are also many many formulas that have anti-inflammatory effect and once again which one to choose really depends on um, the location the disease area the severity acute inflammation or chronic inflammation all right and beyond that what's also interesting is uh, there are some herbs when they have a certain pharmacological effect, they tend to be primarily in one category. So the last time we spoke, uh, I talked about antibiotic effect of herbs. And most of the herbs that have antibiotic effect are primarily in the heat category. Maybe 60 to 80% roughly. Okay. And then obviously there are herbs in other category that also have antibiotic effect, perhaps as a secondary effect or tertiary effect. But with anti-inflammatory effect, what happened is you have many herbs in the heat clearing category that have anti-inflammatory effect. But guess what? Many other herbs in many other chapters also have anti-inflammatory effect. So in this case, my rough estimate is probably herbs that have anti-inflammatory effect, maybe 50% at most belong in the heat clearing herb chapter. And then the rest, as you'll see for the rest of the day, are herbs that are in the other chapters that also have anti-inflammatory effect. So some could be in the exterior releasing herbs. So for example, if you have somebody with skin problems, whether it's dermatitis, rash, okay, so those exterior, exterior releasing herbs would have anti-inflammatory effect. A lot of the herbs that dispel wind damp, right? So in this case, we may be talking about wind damp affecting the joints, affecting the muscles. So these patients may have B syndrome, may have arthritis, right? So herbs that dispel wind damp definitely also have anti-inflammatory effect to treat inflammation, arthritis, and pain. Okay, uh, and then uh, some of the blood moving herbs will have anti-inflammatory effects. Some of the interior warming herbs will also have anti-inflammatory effect. And then contrary to um, the first intuition, and that is a lot of the tonic herbs would also have anti-inflammatory effect. And the reason is because in the most chronic case of uh, inflammatory disorder. So once again, this is chronic inflammation, maybe to a point where there is autoimmune disorder and the immune system basically eats away both the healthy tissue and the diseased tissues or try to, while trying to eliminate toxin. So like we mentioned, you know, um, the organ is suffering from atrophy, is suffering from damage. Right? So at this point, you need to use intonic herbs to nourish in and try to restore 
the organ and also qi tonic area to try to restore function. So what happened is a lot of these qi tonics and in tonic herbs, though their primary effect is to tonify qi and nourish in, they also have effect as anti-inflammatory herbs, except they are more to treat the deficiency qi type of chronic inflammation. All right, so don't think that just because inflammation is most likely heat, then you cannot use tonic herbs because they are warm and they will just add to the heat. Okay, so there are times when the chronic inflammation is deficiency heat, so it's necessary to use both tonic herbs to treat the underlying deficiency and also some herbs to clear deficiency heat to treat the chronic inflammation. And then finally, I put down question marks here because this is another area where uh, it goes against the TCM intuition of why would you use this category of herb to treat inflammation. Okay, and I'll just keep it as a secret for now. Uh, so uh, hopefully that will um, trigger your curiosity so you stay till the end of the class. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll examine the formulas and single herbs at the same time in terms of what they are, what they do, and how they help to treat inflammation affecting different parts of the body. All right, so disease from a TCM perspective usually starts from the exterior and they gradually go interior and they start from mild and they gradually become more severe. So we'll follow the same path and start with um, commonly seen inflammatory condition that start from the exterior. So the first will be wind heat affecting the skin. All right, so this in Western terminology or in common English is basically some type of allergen, some type of uh, trigger that when the body comes into a contact, cause an allergic reaction or inflammatory reaction. So the most simple example would be maybe um, poison oak or poison ivy, or maybe pollen, or maybe whatever the allergen is. So personally, I'm allergic to kiwi fruit. So whenever I eat birthday cake with kiwi, I would end up with uh, skin rash and sneezing and runny nose and sinusitis, basically the superficial allergy reactions, all right? So for, when something like this occurs, okay, you want to get rid of wind heat, which is the allergic reaction, and also the toxins, you want to release it from the exterior okay so obviously the best treatment is no treatment at all and that means if you can identify what the toxin is or allergen is then try to avoid it if at all possible but if you are exposed to it already then the next best thing is to help to, to treat the patient symptomatically so one of the most effective formula is called Xiao Feng San which is literally to eliminate the wind powder so this is best for reaction of the skin so when you have eczema rash dermatitis and so on Shafongsan is one of the best formula to use. Okay, and actually the second one, second formula is a typo. So if you could uh, cross it out or delete it. All right. Um, the third one is a formula called Dangui Yinzi, uh, Dangui Decoction. And this is actually one of the more important formula. And the reason I say that is because uh, while we still see a lot of allergy today, that are caused directly by uh, physical contact, all right? So whether it's contact with poison oak, poison ivy, or kiwi fruit, or pollen, or whatever the allergen is, uh, a lot of people today, they have an allergic reaction uh, that happens as a result of a long-term exposure at a very low amount to some type of toxins or allergen. So on any given day, it may not be a problem, but if you're exposed to this allergen every single day for a month or year at a time, eventually your body can no longer get rid of it, and then reaction starts to happen. It's almost like, imagine if you have a bucket, right? And then the water, you know, representing the allergen starts dripping in there, right? So initially, you know, that, that's not a problem, okay? Because your body, your bucket has a lot of space, but eventually those drips of water will fill of the bucket and then overflow and the moment when it overflows that's when the allergy happens all right so our body and our modern environment is kind of like that there are allergens everywhere there's you know pain there's carpet there's herbicide pesticide there's a lot of pollutants and so on and all those things we are exposed to on a small scale every single day so initially it's not a problem but over time it becomes a problem okay so in this particular case 
the main problem is no longer just at the skin level, but they start deep inside in the blood level. All right, so Dang Gui Yi is a great formula to help to slowly treat the problem from the inside and eventually out. All right, so this is a great formula to nourish the blood, to treat blood dryness, and help to treat the problem from within. Okay, so if this is the type of problem that you or the patient have, then you might need to use Dang Gui Yi Zi, Dang Gui Decaution to treat the cause which is inside, and also Xiao Feng San, eliminate the wind powder to treat the symptom, which is outside. And sometimes you need to do both. There are times when it's more important to treat cause, and there are times when it's more important to, to, to treat the symptoms. All right. And then finally, you have a formula called Qing Sang Fang Feng Tang, clear the upper and guard the wind decoction. And this is a formula historically for treating wind or wind heat affecting the upper part of the body. And today, the most common application of this formula is for acne vulgaris. Okay, especially people that have cystic acne or acne with a lot of pus and the patient then scratch it or try to pop, pop it too early and therefore lead to infection. All right, so Qing Sang Fang Feng Tang is one of the best formula to use for that particular indication okay and now if we could we'll zero in on one formula and look at the ingredients a little bit more so in this case we'll look at Xiao Feng San so this is the composition of Xiao Feng San so as you can see most of the herbs in this formula uh, herbs are release the exterior and like we mentioned a lot of herbs in non heat current chapter also have anti-inflammatory effect so this is a formula this these are many herbs that are exterior releasing herbs that also have significant anti-inflammatory anti-allergic anti-pyrrolic and also anti-histamine anti effect Okay, so I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. So primarily that refers to the Ta three herbs, which are Jing Jie, Shizeno Peta, Fang Feng, Sapos Nikovia, and also Chan Tui, Sakata Moting. So these are the three herbs that together have anti-allergic, anti-histamine, anti-pyrrolic, and also mass, mass cell stabilizing effect. So once you stabilize a mass cell, mass cell when it's degranulated, that's when it releases the histamine. And histamine then leads to allergy and and leads to itching. Right. So basically these four effects, they go hand in hand. Okay, and like we mentioned earlier, this formula is mostly for uh, wind heat at the exterior in the form of eczema, urticaria, rash, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are the TCM and Western indications, and these are the TCM and Western functions. Expel wind from the exterior, clear heat, and dispel dampness. And once again, anti-allergic, antihistamine, and mast cell stabilizing. Okay, so overall, I would say this formula is quite effective to treat the skin allergy. Okay, uh, probably, um, Comparable, maybe a little bit weaker compared to the drugs. Uh, and the reason I can tell you that is because I do get allergy quite a bit. So sometimes I take Xiao Feng San, and sometimes if it's really severe, um, I do take Claritin sometimes. Okay, um, so that's my um, personal take. All right. A lot of people these days also have wind affecting the nose. Okay, so this is part of the allergic response, and this is probably the worst time out of the year as far as seasonal allergy is concerned. Um, I live in Los Angeles, and this year uh, there is a record amount of rain, okay, and snow. And what that means is during springtime, which is just about right now, you know, actually started about two, three weeks earlier till now and may last for a few more weeks the flowers are blooming everywhere and what I, what then happened is of course you have pollens everywhere as well so the last two weeks have been quite bad for me as far as allergy goes and you can probably still tell i'm you know Hold, pinching my nose, scratching my nose, because I do have a bad allergy. And my vo voice is probably a little, a little bit nasal as well. So despite the herbs that I do take, unfortunately, the pollens are in the air and there's really no escaping it. Um, so, um, you know, while I mentioned earlier that the best treatment is no treatment, is to avoid the allergen as much as possible. But unfortunate, unfortunately, in this case, allergen, allergen is in the air. Um, yeah, so despite all the herbs that I take, despite the change of air filters, you go in and out of the house, you go somewhere, and you're just going to get exposed to it. So, yeah, so you just do the best you can. 
So anyways, uh, these are the four primary formulas for patients that have sinusitis, rhinitis, sneezing, you know, basically seasonal allergies, pollen allergies, things that are in the air. Okay, so that's the win, right? So Xin Yisan, magnolia flower powder is more for the wind or the wind cold. Uh, so in this case, patients tend to sneeze quite a bit, they have some aversion to wind, and if they blow their nose, uh, generally the nasal discharge is uh, clear and white. Okay, so it's more of a wind or wind cold type of presentation. And then sometimes when a condition lingers, okay, and the infection starts to get worse, or I'm sorry, inflammation starts to get worse, then the inflammation becomes more of a heat component, right? So at this point, the congestion becomes worse, and the nasal discharge start to turn from white and watery to yellow and more sticky, all right? So this is when you start to have more inflammation. All right, so once again, this now becomes, well, Xin Yisan is more of an allergy, and then Tang Er San more specifically treat the sinusitis and rhinitis. So there's more of an inflammatory condition. And you can also tell from the Western disease name, itis, right, I-T-I-S, uh, in Latin means inflammation. So whenever you have uh, dermatitis, which is the inflammation of the skin, or sinusitis or rhinitis, you know, which is inflammation of the sinus cavities or the nose, right? So you know there's more heat involved. So Chang Er Zi San is more specific for wind heat, okay? So like the condition I described earlier. And then Qing Bi Tang is more of a contemporary formula. So probably, became um, very popular and very frequently used in the last 50 years or so. Uh, so this is a formula that treats stampede in a more severe form compared to Chang'e Zisan. So in this case, uh, I would equate it to stampede or maybe sinus infection. Okay, so um, probably not just allergy turning into inflammation, maybe there's some bacteria, there's some virus involved. So there's some infection component and inflammation component. So this formula is more bitter, more cold, and stronger compared to the first three. Okay, and then the last formula is Xin Yi Qing Fei San or Xin Yi Qing Fei Yin, Magnolia decoction to clear the lung. And the best way to think of this formula is this is a formula that treats the nose, which is what Xin Yi is, and also treats the lung. So these are the patients that have um, allergy of the nose, they have post nasal drip, and then uh, as they don't blow, blow it out, the sinus discharge then drip into the throat and then into the lung. And therefore, what start out as perhaps just an allergy or maybe just mild inflammation, then change to tonsillitis or th sore throat and eventually lung infection. Okay, in fact, this is the main problem my daughter has. My daughter is about two and a half, and she does not know how to blow her nose. So anytime she has runny nose, she suck it in, and then sometime later it turns into a cough and maybe even turn into a lung infection, all right? So uh, we try to use uh, bulbs as much as we can, but that doesn't get rid of all of it, you know, so we are, we, you know, so until we can teach her to blow her nose, um, this is a problem. And then, you know, obviously there are other people that have signed, you know, post nasal drip as well. All right. So these are these are the four formulas that are most effective for treating wind affecting the nose. And one other side note is as you use herb to treat this problem. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is basically for treating patients, the bottom line is you need to have the medicine to go to the disease area, right? So if you are treating the nose, actually one of the best things you can do is imagine you have you use herbs in granules. So you mix the granule with hot water, you stir it up, and initially it may be too hot to drink. So a lot of people just let it sit and cool down. But what happened is while it's cooling down, you have a lot of essential oil that are evaporating and basically being wasted, all right? so. Instead of it being wasted, what you can do is imagine if this, you know, this is a cup. So you use your hands and you form a little tent on top of the cup. And then while the solution is cooling down, 
you inhale the steam and you inhale the essential oil right into your nose. So the steam will help to hydrate the nose and essential oil will help to treat the sinus problem, which is exactly where the disease area is. And then once it cools down, you can then drink the decoction. So that's one of the ways to get the most out of the herb, both in, in terms of not wasting anything and also to maximize delivery of the herb right to the disease area, right? So you have inhalation right into the nose, and then, then after that you drink it, it goes to your stomach, you absorb it, and then goes back systemically to the rest of the body and also the nose. All right, so that's one little hint um, to get the most out of these formulas, you know, whichever one you select to, treat, to help to treat the patient. All right, so as far as these formula, these four, four formulas goes, the one formula that we will zero in a little bit more is called Chang Er Zi San. And in this case, um, both for therapeutic effect and also for the potential side effect that you need to know both. Okay, so this is the composition of Chang Er Zi San. It has Chang Er Zi Zhenthian fruit, Sini Hua Magnolia flower, and then Bai Zi Angelica and Bo He Mint. Okay, so a relatively simple formula, primarily for nasal obstruction caused by wind. So like I mentioned, wind heat, you can use it for acute or chronic sinusitis or allergic rhinitis. All right, TCM effect is to dispel wind and open the nasal orifice. Western uh, pharmacology is antihistamine, anti-allergic, and also anti-inflammatory effect. And the two primary herbs in this case are Chang Er Zi, Zhenthian fruit, and Xin Yi Hua Magnolia flower, as these two herbs have anti-allergic, antihistamine, and anti-inflammatory effect. All right, so these are the two main herbs, even though they have what sounds like similar effect to the first formula we talked about earlier, which is Xiao Feng San. But those are target primarily the skin, and these two are target primarily the nose. Okay, so once again, like we mentioned earlier, when we have that slide that showed about 100 different herbs with anti-inflammatory effect, you need to know which herb to pick based on the disease area. Okay, so Fang Feng, Jing Jie are more for the skin, Chang Er Zi, Xin Yi Hua are more for the nose. Okay, and when you do use this formula, uh, what you really need to know is that you, if you remember back to Materia Medica, Chang Er Zi is usually designated as slightly toxic. Okay, but unfortunately, what most textbooks don't tell you is that, well, what is it toxic to? Or what are the adverse reactions? What are the signs and symptoms? And what is the contraindication? And as it turned out, um, the main control indication is actually to the liver and also to the kidney, okay? And what happened is Chang Er Zi, in its raw and processed form, contain toxic, contains toxic proteins that if consumed at a large amount can in fact be quite toxic to the liver and also to the kidney. And that's why uh, this herb needs to be dry fried, and like I indicate here, and also in, in all the classic herbal formula text. And what happens is as you dry fry it and use high temperature, you need to dry fry it to a point where the spikes on the outside becomes dull or no longer present. And that's an indication that enough heat has been processed to detoxify the herb. And what that does from a chemical level is that um, the dry frying, the temperature will help to enhance the extraction of the active ingredient so we can get more out of the herb and at the same time deactivate the toxic compounds and denature the proteins that are toxic all right so dry frying actually does two things one is to enhance the effect and also decrease the toxicity Okay, so the details are here in case you're interested, basically the dry fry and so on. And then uh, the toxic compound is the carboxy atractylocyte. Okay, so once again, you want to enhance the ex extraction of active compounds and minimize and destroy the toxic compound, which is this compound over here. Okay, and the reason once again, is that if you ingest Chang Er Zi at a large dose or in processed herb, that can cause liver and kidney damage. Okay, but once it's properly processed, that is no longer a concern. Okay, another thing that's very important is um, a lot of uh, Westerners 
love to use tinctures. Okay, so they will make tinctures out of the raw herb and give it to the patient. And one thing I would like to caution you is that um, make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you do your homework. And the reason is because they are, you know, Chinese herb have roughly about 2,000 or 3,000 years of history through actual trial and error in actual patients. So what happened is pao zi, which is the processing of the herb, is a uh, specific class that you need to take in order to understand uh, basically the organic chemistry of herbs. So what happened is there are a lot of herbs that require alcohol to properly extract the active components and those are primarily the tonic herbs and they are some herbs that should not be extracted with alcohol because there are some compounds that are toxic that should only be extracted with water so the active compounds come out and ones that are not uh, water soluble that are alcohol soluble only they stay behind and are poured out as part of the bags so tongue herbs Herbs needs to be dry fried and then water extracted. You never want to use alcohol to attract, extract toxins because then what you will, you will end up extracting is more of the toxic compounds and not the active compounds. Okay, so uh, make sure you follow the traditional description of how the herbs should be prepared because if you deviate from it, then what, what you end up with is per, perhaps a completely different product that will not have the same effect or the same side effect profile as what Chinese material medical describe it to have. All right, so pharmacologically, basically, Chang Er Zi and Qin Yi Hua, like we mentioned, have anti-allergic and anti-histamine effect. And they do it mainly by blocking the histamine release and also stabilize the mast cells. So basically to stop the allergic reaction right at the root, which is the mast cells and degranulation of the mast cells. They also have strong anti-inflammatory effect by blocking the cytokine production, primarily interleukin-4 and interleukin-13, and to suppress the liposaccharide-induced pro-inflammatory factors. So basically, they are equally effective to treat allergy and equally effective to treat severe inflammation. And that's why they are good for the nose, whether it's allergic rhinitis or inflammatory type of sinusitis and rhinitis. Okay, and that's why this formula, these two herbs are so effective, and the formula Qin Yi San and also Chang Er Zi San are so effective. But like I mentioned, uh, if you do use Chang Er Zi, uh, make sure it's dry fried, make sure it's water extracted, and not the raw process, and not the tinctured form. Okay, so I can't stress that enough, that's very important. But if for some reason, Okay, the patient has pre-existing liver disease, maybe they accidentally took too much of Tang Er Zi or Tang Er Zi San. Then these are the classic description of how you can use herb to treat the overdose of Tang Er Zi, Zentian fruit. Okay, you can use Ban Lan Gen, Isata's root, at 120 grams, cook in water and give the decoction. You can use a combination of Gan Cao, licorice, 30 grams, and Lu Dou, uh, Mang Bing, 120 grams, use it in decoction and give it to the patient. You can use Lu Gen, Lu Dou, Jin Lin Hua, Ge Gen, Gan Cao, 9 grams, or you can use acupuncture, basically needle, large intestine 11, and also spleen 6. Okay, so um, these are very useful information that I hope you never have to use. Okay, um, and this is also something that I feel is very, very important. You know, in my, I've been practicing for about 25, 30 years and writing books for about a little bit over 20 years. And one of the things that I always try to do, uh, much like in this class, is to present as balanced information as I possibly can on the pros and cons of Chinese herbs, the effect and also the side effect of Chinese herbs. Uh, because um, Chinese herb is not all safe or uh, side effect free. You know, there are some herbs that can potentially create side effect. And if anybody is to know this, it has to be the TCM practitioners. You need to know what herb may cause what side effect, what herbs may cause, or what herbs have what contraindications. And if somehow, worst case scenario, they do occur, we need to know how to take care of it the best we can. You know, so Tang Er Zi, Zentian fruit is one of those examples you know not gonna work in the US, I've been practicing for about 25, 30 years, and I've been doing a lot of consultation to practitioners for the same amount of time. 
So not going to win. I'm not aware of one single event of Tang Erzi toxicity here in the United States. You know, so I think overall, we as TCM community has have done a great job. You know, in terms of herb company properly processing the herb and TCM practitionerly properly identifying the di diagnosis and using the herb. You know, so like I said, not going to win. In the last 25, 30 years, I'm not aware of one single toxicity issue with Chang'e Zi or Chang'e Zi San. Okay, so let's take a 10 minutes break and then we'll come back and uh, continue with Bi Zheng, painful obstruction syndrome.